Well, hello there, everyone. Um, we are doing, I guess this is Simple Patch Monday, since I missed it on Friday, but I was out of the country, so uh, you get Simple Patch Monday. Um, we are going to work on a patch to make very simple artificial bell tones using um, some basic modulation, and uh, it's otherwise going to be based on the simple sine wave tone that we uh, did in an earlier video. So it should be fairly straightforward. Okay, just to review, the simple sine wave tone starts by taking our MIDI inputs, getting the pitch output, and sending the pitch to the oscillator so that the oscillator will be, will be producing the pitch that we want. Then grabbing the sine wave output of the oscillator, and sending it to the signal, signal input on an amplifier. Then, because that would just give us a continuous tone all the time, which would be kind of irritating, we need to get the gate from the MIDI input, which tells us when someone's playing a note, and send that to an envelope generator, its gate input, and then take the output from the envelope generator, which will give us a nice shape, a nice musical curve, and send that to the control inputs on the um, amplifier, so that our signal will be uh, will start silence, be amplified up, and then um, go back down to silence. So let's plug the output into the computer. I'm hoping you'll be able to hear this decently well. Uh, just for simplicity's sake today, I'm just recording off the camera's mic. So I turn the computer speakers up a little bit, and hopefully you'll be, you'll be able to hear it. And of course we need a MIDI input. So here's our MIDI cable. Instead of running sequences this time, I'm just hooking it up to the trusty Akai Iwi. And we will just play a few notes and hear what this sounds like. So, as you can hear, I've got the envelope generator set to an almost zero attack. Well, it's pretty much a zero attack, a zero decay, sustain is all the way up, and a very small release. So that it's almost a blip. It gives us just a little bit of shape, um, and we're getting these very simple sine wave tones. Um, okay, so where do we go from here? This is what we had before. Uh, the first thing that I was playing with when I uh, came across this was that the um, the gates obviously should be able to give us a blip um, with the envelope uh, set as I as I described, but I found you could get a slightly sharper blip with an interesting shape to it by using the trigger instead. The trigger doesn't stay on the whole time that you hold a note. It just flickers every time you play a note. So you'll see the light go on when I play a few notes. So see how the gate LED stayed on and the trigger just flickered? And as you heard, it gives us a slightly sharper sound. So, um, so that's uh, the first step. The second step involves bringing another oscillator into the picture. Now, my MIDI interface only has uh, a couple of outputs. The gate, the trigger, both of which we've seen used, the pitch, and it has one for the velocity. The velocity uh, output is, uh, gives a value uh, showing how fast you struck the key if you're playing on a keyboard. On my Iwi, I've got the velocity programmed to um, vary with the amount of breath control. So we're going to take our velocity output from the MIDI interface and send it to the pitch input of our other oscillator. Now that's a bit of a weird patching, but the idea is basically depending on how hard I blow into the iwi, 
um, the oscillator will make a different pitch across its entire range. Uh, the other thing to note is that our first oscillator is set at the 16 foot range which is almost uh, near the bottom it's two notches up from, the, from uh, being a low frequency oscillator. The oscillator I'm going to add in is set in the 8 foot range so it's producing a much higher range of pitches well not a much higher, uh, you know, one, one block up um, range of pitches and that will um, uh, be the frequency that we'll be using to modulate our signal. So, what are we going to do with that? Well, let's take the sine wave again because it's a nice simple a nice sim simple modifier and we are just going to do basically the most basic type of modification you you'll generally do which is that we are going to route this signal into the pitch input, the exponential frequency input of our original oscillator. Now I've got this level set to 5. Uh, the level influences how much the, um, the, the modifying signal affects the original signal. And you don't want to set it up too high because then it will seem fairly random. I mean, I don't have intense control over the um, force with which I blow the uh, iwi and uh, when you're playing a keyboard you have probably a little more control over it but still it's a slightly randomizing factor also because it's um, a higher pitch it's going to be adding to that and we don't want to really you know crank it way up there so um, uh, 5 is about halfway so the fundamental should come through and then we'll be adding this pitch depending on how heavily I blow into the um, iwi. So the result sounds a little like this. Oddly enough, at the lowest frequencies, it has this neat sort of semi-electronic bell or gong tone to it, I think. At the highest frequencies, it retains a little bit of the metallic sound, but sounds a little bit more synthetic. Now, if I just play one single pitch, but vary the, um, the strength with which I'm blowing into the iwi, you can hear the modulation change. You can hear it especially well in the low end, in the low end. Okay, maybe you can hear it better in the high end, but the I find the characteristic difference is interesting in the low end and a little bit more musical. So there you go. That's my basic bell pattern.